So to get started, I want to orient everybody at Goshen Valley. Um, Goshen Valley is in um, central Utah. It's a southern Utah Valley. It's actually a lot of farmland. You go out there, there's probably more cows than people. Um, it's a very low population. These are some census records of some of the towns within the valley. Um, barely over a thousand in most of the cities. Um, zooming in on the valley, here we have um, the valley is bounded by you have the East Hintic Mountains right here, uh, Lone Ridge, uh, running this way, and then right here we have West Mountain. Um, the entire valley drains into Utah Lake. Uh, a lot of the, the sediment is unconsolidated basin fill. There's a lot of coalesced alluvial fans and uh, some quaternary other crescent deposits as well. And this is a summer area climate. And just to give us an even better orientation, um, this is Goshen Valley, and if you look off to the distance, that's where we are today in Provo. Um, um, so Utah County has a growing infrastructure. Uh, the population, there's a Utah, Utah Foundation in 2014 did a study, and they project that in 2050, the population will grow to be over a million people. And right now, we're a little over 500,000. You need a place to put all of these people. And if you go home today and you Google Utah County Planning Committee, the first thing that pops up is plans for Goshen Valley. So they plan to put all these people in Goshen. Um, they really like it. Um, on their website, they say that Goshen is a shovel ready location that they can build. Um, I don't know if I agree with that. I've been out there, it's pretty swampy, but. Um, <laughs> They, this is a, a map taken from their plans. Um, in the blue, these are some industrial centers. They plan, um, all that yellow is residential um, neighborhoods. They have plans for major transport. Um, and, and a quote from them, they said that Goshen is a tremendous opportunity for economic development. Um, and they have it built right up to the lake. So there is a problem, however. Um, you need to have water to support people. And arsenic is actually extremely high in Goshen Valley, especially in the springs. Um, the EPA limit for arsenic is 0 0.01 <coughs> parts per million. Um, so anything above that is um, not fit for drinking water. Um, many of the springs in Goshen Valley are actually quite higher than this EPA limit. Um, arsenic has a lot of health effects. Um, such as thickening, discoloration of skin, stomach pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. It is it's even linked to the uh, to cancer of the bladder, lung, skin, kidney, nasal passages, and, and so on. If it's not uh, when it's in high concentrations. Um, so the overall question that we'd like to understand is why do these springs in Goshen Valley have such a high arsenic level, and where is this arsenic coming from? I don't have an answer. Uh, for that today. However, this project, I would like to uh, answer what are the chemical signatures of the springs in Goshen Valley, and do these uh, chemical signatures indicate possible differences in source water and flow pathways? <coughs> Ultimately, to help answer that overall question in the future. Um, so methods, we had five sampling areas, 43 samples total. Um, all the samples were uh, used clean hand, dirty hands method. Um, and then we took the samples back to the lab and we analyzed trace metals, major dissolved ions, and stable isotopes. Right here is the atomic absorption spectrometer. That's the machine I normally uh, use in the lab to, to find uh, major cations. We also use ICPOES for trace metals and major cations. We use the IC for major anions and cavity ring down for stable isotopes. Um, these are the, the sample areas. Um, so here in the red, that's the Janola drains. These are three samples that are on the edge of farmers' fields. It's the springs that are welling up. Um, Lincoln Point up on Utah Lake. These are three springs that are flowing um, right into the lake. Uh, Playa Springs. So we have one up on the lake and uh, a grouping south of the lake. The reason that um, we group those are because of their geothermal signature. Um, we also have the Tintic Springs um, in the west, as well as Warm Springs. And Warm Springs is actually cool. If you hike out there, you can see the springs bubbling right out of uh, Lone Ridge. So 
first look at the trace metal results. Um, so what I did on ArcGIS, I, um, I highlighted all of the samples that are greater than EPA limit in arsenic. So there's, there's quite a few samples, and I plotted these. Um, so on the y-axis, you have arsenic parts per million. These samples are actually in milligrams per liter, um, but assuming density of water is one, use a parts per million interchangeably. Um, the EPA limit here is 0 0.01, so you'll notice again that there's quite a few samples that are high. And the Playa Springs are extremely high. And these Playa spring, Springs, I'll show a picture in a bit, but they're really weird. It's just these big vents in the ground, there's big holes, and they're just bizarre looking. Um, so major dissolved ions, we're looking at major cations of calcium, magnesium, sodium, and potassium. And the anions, sulfate, bicarbonate, uh, carbonate, and chloride. Um, so we'll, we'll first go to the red here, the genola, genola drains. So I use these stiff diagrams. Um, these are in milliequivalents per kilogram. And it helps to understand kind of the major cations and major anions. So here uh, we have a sol uh, sodium sulfate uh, signature. Um, we, here we have a calcium sulfate <coughs> and another calcium sulfate. Um, these are actually quite interesting, they're so close in proximity, yet they have a different signature. I'm not sure quite what's going on here. Um, now going to Lincoln Point, these three samples that um, go right into Utah Lake are all sodium chloride. Um, now to Playa Springs, so we're first going to go to the Playa Springs up on the lake, and then down to the, the others. So this one is um, flowing right into the lake, has a sodium chloride signature. Um, and as we go around, all of these have a sodium chloride signature, but these are the vents I was talking about, just these big holes in the ground. Um, uh, next we'll go to Tintic Springs. So here we have a calcium uh, bicarbonate um, signature, and here we have a calcium sulfate. This sample is actually quite interesting. We believe it's eva uh, evaporative. It was purple when it was sampled and very high conductivity. Um, so now going to Warm Springs. All of the Warm Springs samples um, turned out to be sodium chloride. Um, and so this is kind of the overall picture that we're seeing. We've got these, this blue in the center is sodium chloride. Um, so that's hopeful. Maybe they're, they're related in source water. Um, and then kind of on the fringes, we have the different chemical signatures. So I was really curious about this high arsenic level in Playa Springs. So I sorted them by arsenic level. And you'll notice there may not be a correlation with the sodium chloride signature in high arsenic because there's some sodium chloride that has zero. Um, but it, um, the warm springs up there, a GV8, I was interested why is that up there. And we actually sampled this a few times, once in August and September. In August there was very little water, and in September um, there was a lot of water. Um, so we believe that this one is actually evaporitic, it wasn't a spring, it was fed by warm springs, um, but was able to evaporate and condense. So this isn't a very good representation of the actual groundwater. Um, we also have these other two ply springs, and why are they though? Why aren't they with the other? And again, that's because they're very different than those holes in the ground. Um, the, this one flows into the lake, and this is a, a bigger spring. Um, so we were on it to understand the stable isotopes. Um, so on the, the y axis, we have deuterium, on the x axis, we have oxygen 18. So this gray line is a meteoric water line. If a sample hugs that meteoric water line, it's likely a representation of groundwater signature. And you'll notice here the green is the Playa Springs, and those are much lower than the, the uh, meteoric water line. This indicates that it's a geothermal signature. Uh, something that was interesting is the warm springs, the actual temperature, the field parameters, they were warm, but it didn't plot as a geothermal uh, signature. So again, the, the Playa Springs really interested, um, but hurt my interest. And I, I found this 1983 gravity study by Deborah Davis and Kenneth uh, Cook. It's a U UGS publication. And they did uh, uh, 
the survey in English Ocean Valley. And so here's the lake, and that green dot is my playa samples. And if we go from the cross section of C to C prime, so next to my red arrow, that's where they say bend. So that's the bend in the cross section. And right there, we have a deep fault. It's about 2.5 kilometers deep. So this is really, I thought it was awesome because we have the high arsenic levels there and we have the geothermal signature and this lines up perfectly. Um, so some of the conclusions that I've come to is um, figuring out the, the signatures of these these samples, Janelle Drains, Lincoln Point, Playa Springs, uh, Tintic Springs. Uh, I don't know if there is a, a cor correlation of the sodium chloride in the source water, and I say that because the Playa Springs has a much different flow pathway. Um, so the Playa Springs are geothermal, they are likely on a deep fault, having a, a deeper flow pathway. And the springs seem to correlate with higher arsenic levels. In future work, I'd like to look further into the vaults within the valley and also to analyze strontium isotopes to understand where their source is. Is it volcanic or is it just a playa sediment? Um, and acknowledgments, uh, Brian Selk, Greg Carling, and all those who ran samples in the Carling lab. Thank you.